Bully me into selling you my car? You pissed off the wrong mama bear. So, about 8 years ago I'm selling a used car. Engine light was on, the AC needed recharging, and the fuel pump or something was out. So, I go to my local, trusted, sales site. Ad goes up with a few pictures and the words, I work weird hours so I may not be able to accept a phone call. Please only text me. Yay to working swings and midnights, right? It was actually college classes. But same thing for me. So, a few days in, I get a pretty standard text, Hi, I'm Matt. Is your car still for sale? Matt isn't his real name. But you get the idea. So, text back that it is. A few standard texts about price, why is the engine light on, who did you get the quote from, I listed an approximate price on the repairs as quoted from my trusted mechanic, and what not go back and forth. The next day I get a text from him saying are you gonna take all your shit out of the car before you sell it to me or is that my job? Unwarranted hostility? Really? WTF man. He's not the only interested party, so I text him back, I'm not selling the car to you, so don't worry about it. I never said I would sell it to him, he never asked if he was the only interested party, and others were arranging test drives already. I didn't need him and his less than full price, partial commitment. And the shit he was complaining about is three textbooks and a bag I keep clothes in. Four things. This guy didn't like to take no for an answer, and starts calling, and texting about how my car's paint is peeling, true, but the pics and description said so, and how dare I ask so much, $1000, for a piece of shit car. I started replying for a time, telling him he wasn't going to get the car, that I had other interested buyers, so he didn't need to worry about it, etc. Then things got personal. This site gave you the option to link to Facebook so you could post at both places at the same time. So I had. I didn't have my privacy settings turned down as it was still early into Facebook's absolute train, and I actually trusted them at the time. Silly me, I know. I hadn't anticipated that he would be able to find my info through the website's post, and find my name, my location, pictures of my kid, my mother-in-law's obit, etc. Surprise me, he did. He starts text me about how I should be ashamed of myself for saying no to him, a muscular dude, and me being a quite round female. He included a picture in one text, and he wasn't the muscular, built man he claimed to be. He looked like a bean pole with two ab muscles, so WTF dude. He asked me if I even knew everything about cars or if I made the post while on my period so I didn't know what I was talking about. He texted that I should be lucky I was already married or else he would come to my house and show me how a real man handles a little witch. He got close but didn't have an address and the way my address pulls up on GPS, he never would find my apartment. Thankfully. Small side info, since I was in college at the time and needed a more flexible schedule, I worked as a school crossing guard. Every two weeks or so, we'd go in to sign our time cards in order to get paid. This crossing guard gig was a high though my local PD. Not all crossing guard gigs are the same. But this one was. During one of these visits into the office, I was using my phone while I was waiting for my boss to get to me, my name being low in the alphabet. I hadn't yet blocked the dude as it hadn't been long since this started and I was hoping it would fizzle on its own. I didn't check my phone in class, choosing to turn it off to avoid anything on it the entire day, and I was often flooded with several hours of texts all at once. What I saw on my phone drove me over the cliff. He started texting about pictures I had posted on Facebook about my 8 or 7 year old son. He had just majorly crossed the line. The cleanest version of his texts included things like your kid is just as ugly as you are. I hope you don't plan on him leaving home to get a wife anytime soon, and how a smudge of dirt on his face from a day at the zoo looked like I beat him. I didn't sell you a car and you're taking out your age by threatening to our backslash pay me and accusing me of beating my kid? Oh hell no. Apparently, I was loud when I said what I did, because my boss stepped right over to me next and asked what was wrong great person. 10 tenths. Would boss again. 
I told her that I was getting these abusive texts from a rando that tried to buy my car. I told her I was about to erase the texts and block him, but she's like, no, wait don't do that. Let me see your phone. So happy I didn't delete them because this next part still makes my heart sore. I offer and she takes my phone, reading all the sick and vile things he texted to me. She tells me to wait until she's cleared the lobby of the other crossing guards, so I do. She then tells me to follow her behind the security doors at the PD station, still having my phone. I don't know what's happening, but I liked and trusted her, so I do. I follow her back to her office where she works on her computer, referring my phone on occasion. She asks if all I have is the phone number or if I got his name too. I tell her I only got a first name, and scroll to the text where he introduced himself. A semi-uncomfortable amount of time later, she hands back my phone. Something to mention, my boss isn't just administrative. I didn't know it at the time. But she's a full-on lieutenant in the local PD. She came up the ranks from patrol, moving to a position where she exclusively investigated child-slash-elder-slash-disabled abuse complaints before moving into her current desk position. Needless to say, she didn't take people threatening harm to kids lightly. Because I hadn't blocked the number, I still had the text messages with the dude's name, and she had used it to cross-search him and the phone number. Long story short, she knew exactly who he was. She says not to worry, but don't delete or respond to his texts anymore. She had it. If it got worse, I should call her raw 911 as appropriate right away. Unconcerned and happy she had the situation in hand, I leave and go to class. When I'm back to the office to sign my next time card two weeks later, I had several unread texts from the guy. I had filtered them so I didn't see them pop up and hadn't read them. I had sold the car, for full asking price, and all but forgotten the entire situation. My boss tells me to wait for her again as she had something else for me to sign, and I again return to her office. She briefly explains what she had for me what an actionable complaint that she needed me to sign from my issue two weeks ago. I remember everything all over again. She must see my face because she tells me not to worry and that she can tell me what's going on more after I actually sign the form. So I do. Dear Edit, this is the best situation anyone could have asked for. The phone number tied to many people as the provider was known for cheap cell service for those that were desperate for a way to contact people slash services slash employment. But with the name Matt, again, fake name, she was able to find out who was messing with me. She then got a driver's license, which led to a address, which led to a police report for possible domestic violence. Fall down the rabbit hole some more, and you find out that this dude had five kids by four women, and he was in arrears on his child support to them all. Hadn't been paying for 10 plus years, and it was in the neighborhood of 30-50k, if memory serves. But he somehow, just two weeks ago, request a title transfer for a new to him, quite fancy old car. I don't remember the kind. But think high-end car show and massive insurance premiums. Being so far in arrears meant that my boss was able to place a seizure order on the car so it could be sold to pay back the child's support. One of the baby mamas live in a state where fleeing child support meant you could have a warrant issued for your arrest. When she called the interested parties in that state to see if they wanted her to execute the arrest warrant, they said yes, with much haste. That that was a funny turn of phrase, so I always remembered it. One conversation later, and my boss was able to determine that he was using the brother's social security number on his employment forms to avoid child support garnishments. This is all sorts of illegal, so she notified the guy's HR department so it could be corrected. They informed her he would be fired for fraudulently submitting false documents. She then told me that about four days ago, she had executed the warrant on the dude for felony child abandonment, and that the state he was to be held for was already en route to pick him up. It carried a 8 to 12 year sentence, and he still had to pay his back child support. I could have dealt with the comment, I could have dealt with the not taking no for an answer, even dealt with the cyber stalking. A little. But, when your twisted mind okays you to bring my kid into the picture, you done crossed the line. If you would have stopped at no, you wouldn't be in jail right now. TLDR. 
guy trying to buy my car makes a rude comment to me so I won't sell to him. He can't take no for an answer, so he cyberstalks me and threatens my young child. Doesn't realize my boss is a lieutenant in the local PD, ends up getting a high-end car repoed for 50k in back child support. He now has a felony record, and is currently sitting in jail. Edit, Holy Awards Batman. Thank you so much. My boss really was the best. I cried when I left that job. She retired a few years back and I sent her a huge cake. She remembered me and called to thank me. She was fantastic and never gave me a reason to doubt her support.